Yeah, what's poppin' guys? Sizzle here, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you by far the easiest way to get emulators for literally every system under the sun up and running. If your goal is to just play video games that you have backed up, or that you have ROM files for, or whatever, on your PC, this is the easiest way to do it. Uh, the downsides of this, though, I want to mention ahead of time, is it's a bit harder to, like, fully min-max everything and configure everything in a way that you like it. At least from my personal experience, I still prefer having individual emulators installed. Uh, and as such, that's still how I'm going to be emulating stuff on my system, because that's just my way to do it. But I think for the average person, this is just the go-to. This just It just makes sense. It just works. Uh, it's definitely worth mentioning there's an alternate kind of middle-of-the-road type of option, an emu deck, uh, where they do actually have a Windows release now. But from my experience, trying out emu deck, trying out their Windows release... A lot of the emulators it comes with, at least on Windows, as of November 2024, are out of date and have a lot of bad defaults and a lot of problems with a lot of the games that I tried to test them out with. So unless you're, you're trying to do some weird middle stuff and you're really, really willing to sit down and tinker with stuff more than people that mess with stuff with individual emulators, I just can't really recommend this to people at the moment. But it's worth keeping an eye on this because what this does is installs every single individual emulator for you and then you can kind of configure it from there is the idea. The problem is that they're all out of date. If they were all up to date, this would be my, my recommended way of doing stuff, but they're not. Uh, and then this, on the other hand, just installs like a whole system where all the emulators and stuff are all tied up in the system and it's pretty much impossible to actually uh individually boot an emulator you just boot this whole thing and it comes with everything on it which is much simpler for most people with that kind of whole rant out of the way uh let's go over how to actually set it up how to install it and it's also worth noting i guess that this is only for windows if you're on uh mac or linux you just can't do this so you have two uh main options for installing it uh one you can go to the website if you have a lot of antivirus stuff this is probably just the easiest way to do it just hit the download button here and it'll work for you in my case, I prefer downloading it from like the most uh, official, easy source, in which case you hit this little releases button on the GitHub here. The GitHub will be linked in the description. They might change their website or something in the future, so it's worth definitely checking out through there. Uh, we're going to go to this, the release section. Make sure you hit the thing with latest on it. Find the Win64 setup exe file. Click on it once, and it will download. Uh, can be slow depending on your country, your internet, whatever. So you can also try this one instead, where it will uh, download through itch.io instead, which is kind of the default I guess most people should probably be doing. So just hit download now. Uh, from here, you hit download now again. It'll prompt you to do a donation, but you don't have to. You just hit no thanks, just take me downloads. If you do end up liking this a lot, you should donate to them so that they can keep making it better for you and everyone else. But yeah, once you hit download, there you go. You can see that's downloading there, uh, but at least for me, that's downloading way slower than on GitHub, and it's the same file at the end of the day, so I'm just going to download it through GitHub instead. Uh, although the download isn't insanely fast, or it wasn't <laughs> earlier when I did this, for some reason now it is. Now it's going uh, 30 megabytes a second before it was doing 3. But either way, I'll go cut to once it's downloaded. All right, now that we got it up and running, up and downloaded, uh, I'm going to drag this out. I have to hit because it's from GitHub, you have to hit keep, show more, and then keep anyway, because otherwise it tries to delete it for you. Thinks it could be a virus theoretically, because not a lot of people have downloaded this and ran it. Uh, if that's a problem you're having and you don't know to get around it, just get it from here. Uh, get it get it from their site and the itch.io. Uh, but otherwise, the download should be a little bit faster through this. Anyway, uh, drag. I'm going to drag this out onto the desktop for you. You can just run it right away. But yeah, just double click to run it. And it'll open up. Uh, if you download it through GitHub, you'll have this pop up. If you didn't, you still might. You just want to run it anyway. Then it'll pop up here. You want to select the language to use. In my case, English. Hit next. Hit I accept after, of course, reading through all this. Read through all this as well. And then hit next. Uh, for here, this is where it will install everything. You want to make this somewhere that you can actually access it. You can make this your documents folder, your desktop, your downloads. Or the recommended place to install this is on like a little flash drive, like on a USB flash drive, if you have one with a lot of extra space. Or just an external hard drive, right? Just some external thing you can plug in, because then you can use this on all your computers if you have more than one. Or you could use some like a friend's computer. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to get it on my second drive right there. And just hit next 
And then here it'll install all the stuff it needs to run. So just hit next and then create a desktop shortcut. Yep. Create a desktop shortcut. You want to hit next and then hit install. And you'll be prompted a bunch of times throughout this for, you know, admin permissions. Are you sure you want to install this? You just got to keep hitting yes. It's installing all the different things it needs and then installing itself. And at least on my computer, which is relatively fast with relatively good Wi-Fi, this process normally takes about five to 10 minutes. So if you're on you know, worse Wi-Fi uh, or a worse system, this might take somewhere between 20 to 30, just a fair warning. Uh, just kind of keep an eye on in the background as it does its thing. Uh, as we near the end of the install, which I kind of just skipped through for you for the sake of viewers at home, uh, it's worth noting that this expects you to have an Xbox controller or at least a controller Windows recognizes connected. So if you don't have one connected, you should probably go connect one right now. I just assume most of you would probably have one connected as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, once you're ready with that, you'd see we now have Retro on our desktop. You can just hit finish and it'll boot up right away. It boots up in full screen. It does do your entire screen for you. Uh, I believe there's a way to set it to boot and windowed, but I haven't played around with it enough to know. And uh, yeah, you actually have to double click the RetroBat thing here to actually run it. Uh, and you can see the first time we run it, obviously it's not going to have any ROMs or games because we didn't put any of them in. But there's some stuff we want to just change uh, when we boot in. First off, it has like some really cool launching stuff right here. Uh, it's making noise as well, but it's not coming through, so I didn't have it set up. Uh, next thing you want to do, definitely for most of you, is press the start button on your controller, or if you're a mouse and keyboard, just click down in the bottom here. Uh, here, let me set it so you can actually see things. There we go. You can click the menu button here, or if you're on a controller, you can press start. You want to go to sound settings, and then from here, where it says front end music, toggle that off and back up, and then you shouldn't have any annoying music blasting in your ears. Uh, that's just something on by default for whatever reason, but once you turn it off this one time, it'll be off forever. And yeah, now that we've done that, we can just hit the quit button here and back out. Uh, once we back out, you want to go to the folder that you installed it in. So in my case, that's the F drive, and you can see I'm in the RetroBat folder. Uh, from here, we have a few different things we want to do. First off, you want to go to the ROMs folder, double click into there, find every single system that you have ROMs for. In my case, I have four separate test ROMs here. Uh, and go put it in, right? So one of them I have is for the SNES. So there we go, SNES, now Dragon Super Mario Kart. Go back to the ROMs folder, keep scrolling. N64, I'm gonna go in there. I got Mario Kart 64, I'm gonna drag that in there. Uh, NDS, Nintendo DS, go right into there. Dragon Days of Ruin. And the last thing I have is for the GameCube. Um, this is to show off how easy it is to get stuff up and running. Double click in the GameCube, Super Monkey Ball, there you go. And once that's all dragged in there, once we're all good to go with that, we want to go back to the RetroBat folder, click on batgui.exe, and that'll open up something else. Now it's worth noting this takes a while to open up. I skipped forward with it in editing, but this took like a solid minute until it actually appeared. Uh, from here you can see quite a lot of things, most of which you just really shouldn't be messing with. The thing you should do though is go to BIOS Checker and see if your system is one of the ones on here. So in my case, we look around just enough, we can see Nintendo DS, of all the systems here, the Nintendo DS is the only one that needs BIOS files. And we need firmware up in, BIOS 7 up in, and BIOS 9 up in. Uh, pretty simple, straightforward way to get all that. You can also go to the RetroBat wiki, which I will also link in the description. Uh, and this will also tell you what you need for all the different systems. Right? So you can search, for example, Nintendo DS, and it'll pop up with it right away. We can go down here, you can see information on the emulators it could use, the game location, the types of game files it'll support, right? So it'll only boot NDS, .bin, .zip, and .7zip files. Uh, and then BIOS files and where you should put them. So in our case, we have all these different files, which I have for my own DS, you can see right here, right? We have BIOS 7, 9, DSi, uh, and you get these by backing them up on your system. I'm gonna go back to the RetroBat folder, go into BIOS, and 
from here, you would think you would put it in uh, Melon DSDS, but it just says put them in the BIOS folder. So you want to trust them, throw all these directly in the BIOS folder, just like that. Uh, once you've pasted everything over into the BIOS folder, like it says, if it wants to put you in a folder beyond BIOS, it will tell you it'll be like a BIOS, Melon DSDS or something. Once we have the BIOS files there, once we have the ROM folders there, uh, you can go back to the BIOS checker here. Make sure you can double check that you have it where it should be. Make sure you hit scan if you've already booted it before. And if we scroll down enough, you can see Nintendo DS is detected BIOS 9 and BIOS 7. Either way, uh, when you have what you need, you can close out of this, open up Retrobat either from here or from the Retrobat folder uh, where you have Retrobat EXE. I'm just gonna boot it from the desktop for simplicity. But once we boot in here, you can see we have a whole different boot menu every single time. Uh, and you can skip past it, I think. Yeah, you just press like start, it skips past it. From here, uh, you can just see it already detects the systems. It has the stuff already shown up in the menu. We got Super Nintendo, N64, GameCube, and DS, which are the exact four systems I put in there. Uh, if I boot up, I just launch into here. You can see it already detected the game, Super Mario Kart, and you just press the OK button, the A button, whatever, and it'll bring you into here. And just like that, we'll be booted straight into it. Uh, for some reason, the window capture froze, but yeah, it, it did boot into it directly. But yeah, you can see it booted in. It's got like a nice little overlay to it. It's doing some funky stuff with the audio, but that's just how it actually is on the real system. And yeah, you can see it. It, it looks it looks good. It works good. My controller's already working. I didn't have to touch a thing. And I'm up and playing the game. Game's working. Uh, but if you're like me, I personally don't really like having the overlay on the side of the screen. And to back out of a game, you just press start and select on your controller. And it'll uh, back you up like this. From here, I'm going to go back to the main menu. And I'm going to change the general settings. Once you're here, just go back to the menu by pressing start. Go to game settings, scroll down a little bit, and you'll see a lot of different options down here. To get rid of the stuff that's on the side, change decorations from auto, and they have a few, but you can change them from auto to none, just like that. You can change shaders that it uses if you want. I'm just going to send the none because I use uh, shader glass to use my shaders. I'll have a video on that in the link in the description. When it says video mode here, you could change that. I'm not going to. Uh, what I'm going to change, though, is game aspect ratio. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is going to configure it for every single system all at once. In my case, I have a standard 16 by 9 monitor. If you know your resolution, pretty much every, uh, every aspect ratio on here uh, is one that actually exists. You might have to look it up for your monitor, but for most people, 16 by 9 or 16 by 10 should be the one you use. In my case, it's 16 by 9 because I have a very, very standard monitor. And that's all I'm really going to change. You can do stuff like turn on Discord risk presence and stuff like that if you want. And bilinear filtering generally should be on as well. Uh, but beyond that, I would, uh, instead of doing global conf configurations, you can actually configure per system, which I'll show you how to do in a second. But just to show you that that works, I'm going to go back to the Super Nintendo, boot it back up, and uh, you'll see we now have the full widescreen thing. It is still low resolution, which there's a way to fix that, which I'll show you in a second with per system configuration. But you can see it now covers my entire screen. It's just the full screen on the game, and I didn't have to do any crazy stuff. And all the stuff is working just like it did before, which is amazing. I'm going to press start and select on my controller to back out of here, though. And I'll show you how to actually change uh, individual settings. And that's just by pressing the select button instead of the start button. Scroll down a little bit, go to advanced system options, and you'll have a lot of different options here. Uh, auto will pick what you already have. You can see current settings none, none, and 16 by 9 because we set that earlier. Uh, something else we can do, depending on the thing, is set an internal resolution, which I don't know necessarily where we can set that here. This one might not be the best one to show it off for. It should be in here somewhere. If you scroll through enough stuff, you'll find an internal resolution and you can mess with all the different settings in here and this will all change it on the emulator. What I'm gonna do instead is go to a system that I know has it, which is the Nintendo GameCube. And as you can see, when we boot it up right away, it'll just ask us, do we wanna install Dolphin? Cause that's what it uses. Just hit yes. And it'll actually download the emulator to use with this uh, just right away. You do need the internet connection for this to work. 
but it's really cool it just does this for you and it'll pre-configure and everything and it'll, it'll just work great right out of the box that is what's super great about this that just works all right took a little bit because it actually went to go download it but it did finish this out just fine and now you can see it does some weird stuff when it boots and then it boots straight in and we got the the game up and running no super monkey ball game data found because it's the first time i'm booting it through here and yeah the game is just working we got monkey ball working it looks solid it looks good but we can make it look a little bit better by increasing the resolution but you can see that looks pretty solid looks pretty good already might actually already be natively upskilled with my video settings not 100 percent sure we can just back out the check right press start and select to back out press the selector options button to go check in on the exact settings for this emulator which you can just do when you're in any of the menus um we can just check here game aspect ratio internal resolution right so this is where you can just set the resolution so i can set it's like three times for example uh, it was automatic, so I guess it was picking what was right for my system, which is just what this is all about. It picks everything exactly as you want it to, uh, and, and just does it automatically. It does it all in the background, you never have to think about anything. You can see, right, this is now at three times. I think it was already at three times when it was working off auto, because it's just some really, really cool software. We can go to the other systems and just check out their working out. Right, Nintendo 64, we just boot it up. We got Mario Kart. Uh, might already have the emulator for it pre-installed. If it doesn't, it always prompts you to install it. But you can see, big Nintendo logo covering the screen. Welcome to Mario Kart. Just like that, we're in Mario 64. Up and running, up and working. Just very, very simple stuff. You can see, here's Days of Ruin. Just up and running. No work on my end. It just works yeah uh, days of room it's not even the one i meant <laughs> to have here but you can see it's working you get a single ds play campaign free battle everything is up and working up and running might not look super pretty when you have it stretched like this and that's why a lot of people don't like turning on stretch resolution you are oftentimes better off changing that uh in, in the default not actually changing that at all we go to our game settings right we can swap back from 69 to auto or whatever the default native stuff is and then we we'll go in here uh we actually want decoration as well so there's stuff on the sides you can see it picks like a nicer resolution that makes things look a lot better a lot more clean it's all it's all personal preference and it's all very easy to configure but with that being said uh hopefully you guys found this useful if you have any questions comments or concerns about this software I can't help you. I don't really use this. I set it up just to see how good it was. And this is really, really cool for the people it's built for, for people that just don't care too much, just want to play their games. Uh, but they have a Discord server linked on their website, which I'll have linked in the description, their website. You just go to it, find their Discord server, go ask questions in there, and I'm sure they'll help you out. And uh, yeah, have a good one.